Yo, what's going on everyone? It's Brian here with Drink a Beer and Play a Game, and today I am bringing you a new type of video. Now in the past, Jim and I, we've done tier rankings on a whole bunch of various things, but usually we just share the actual tier ranking itself, or we talk about our opinions, and we already have the results done. Well today, I'm actually going to do a live ranking. And I got the inspiration from this because I am obsessed with the Fallout TV show. And if you follow this channel for any amount of time, you know I love the Fallout games. So I decided, let me go back to Fallout 3, which is the game that introduced me to this whole crazy ass universe to begin with. And I have a few different videos coming in the works, but I want to start off with a ranking of every enemy you're gonna encounter in Fallout 3. Now, as you'll see, I didn't do every single variant of every single enemy because that's pretty ridiculous. So if you've never seen a tier ranking video, it goes from S to F. Let's start at the bottom with F. Now these are enemies that are not even worth turning on your vets. You're just going to shoot them or hit them with your melee weapon because they're that weak. D are going to be the annoying enemies. They're going to be the ones that probably you see too often or you just encounter them and they piss you off. C is going to be your cannon fodder, and that's going to be the enemy you run into probably the most. So I'm sure a few of you will figure out what that is pretty quickly. B is going to be, you're probably going to need a stim pack. Even at higher levels, the chances are if you run into these enemies, you're not leaving unscathed. Unless, of course, you get some, you know, crazy criticals from a sneak attack. A you're gonna have to bring out some of your best guns. This isn't the time to mess around and try spike knuckles or some other ridiculousness. No, you're gonna need the big boys for that. And S is the stuff of nightmares. It's the enemy that I don't care really what rank you're at, you're just gonna want to avoid or you know shit's about to get real. So that's it in a nutshell. Please make sure, let me know what you think of this tier list and Obviously, these opinions are mine, but I, what I want to hear from you guys is your own opinions, and I will be putting the link below for the tier list so you can fill out yourself. Just be sure to share it with us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, wherever you want to share it with us. Let us know below. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right into this list. All right. So here we go, we have all the enemies up on screen. I did put some logic to the order of the enemies, and I'll get to why some of them have variants while others don't as I approach each one. So let's get this kicked off with the first enemy you're going to encounter in Fallout 3. That's of course the Rad Roach. Now while I know this is an enemy that may be considered iconic just because it's kind of like the face of irradiated enemies, giant cockroaches, but let's be honest. Even as a kid in this game, your dad gives you a BB gun to go down and kill three of them. It's got to be F tier. These things are so easy. You could easily walk past them, not even know they're there. Unless you're really watching your uh, radar and you see a little red blip. You can use your melee weapons, or if you have a gun, honestly, you're not going to want to go into vats for these guys. I mean, let's, I mean maybe you want to go into vats. But honestly, these are an F tier enemy at best. Next, we have the bloat flies. Now, these guys. Whoo, doggy. All right. So when you get to New Vegas, flying enemies have a whole nother meaning. But as really the only flying enemy that you're going to encounter in this game, they're still annoying enough because you probably have to use vats. Now you can aim your weapon and depending on what you're using, you're probably gonna clip them, but just to get rid of them, I'm gonna put it in D as annoying because you're usually gonna run into a group of these things and they're gonna throw their, squirt their whatever's at you. You know you're probably not gonna wanna run up and get melee because you're gonna get a lot of hits from them and that can just be annoying as hell. So. I think annoying is a pretty good spot for these guys. Next, we have dogs. And I and this is where we start running into the fact that I know there's variants of the dogs. But honestly, I'm lumping them all together because really, no matter where you are, you're going to be able to handle them. And even in some of the tunnels where I ran into like huge packs of them, I never found them overwhelming. And I didn't encounter them enough to really consider them cannon fodder. So I'm putting them right there with that bot flies. They're just annoying to me. 
And you know what's annoying? The fact that you got to kill any doggos. Because I love my dogs. So they go in annoying. They're definitely a tier above rad roaches. But you know what? It still sucks. You got to put these bad boys down. Oh. Oh, uh, speaking of bad boys. I still don't know how to pronounce these goddamn names. Yao Gao. Yao Goy. Whatever the hell their name is. These sons of bitches. I'm sorry. They're stuff of nightmares. The show did an amazing job of calling out the feeling you get when you run into them. Like... <laughs> Michael Rappaport's reaction here is exactly how I feel every time I ran into these guys. No matter how often, especially if you run into them early on, I knew I was like, all right, fuck it. If I see them, I'm going to throw down a bunch of mines. I'm going to set a trap for them. Maybe I'll slow them down. And sometimes it worked. Other times they would still get in a couple good swipes, hit me back way too far. These things are terrifying. As, as you would expect a mutated bear to be. So the next one I have a little bit of an issue with. So the centaurs. They are by far one of the most disgusting enemies you're going to come across. Their design is pretty amazing. It's like a mutated human with tentacles coming out of a mouth. And they spit projectile. Um, but honestly, I'm never... I'm never feeling like I'm in danger when I run into these. Even when I run into a couple packs of these. Um, I think I'm only going to put them at the C tier. Because I always found them kind of easy to put down. They're not quite fast enough to catch you. And their projectiles have such a crazy kind of like arc to them. That it's pretty tough to get hit. So if this was strictly a list based on looks and creepiness. They'd be much higher up there. But as an enemy you encounter... Um, at least in Fallout 3, they're not that intimidating. Oh boy, so this next one is the Fire Ants. And there's a lot of variations that I actually did want to put in here. Um, so what I'll actually do for this one is disregard the smaller worker ants. And I'm really only going to be focusing in on the soldier ants or the giant fire ants. And honestly... I got to put these guys at a, a tier because they take so much damage. And let's not forget the fact that they s literally are walking flamethrowers. So I have to put them up there. They're really worth it. Um, pretty cool designs. I like them a lot. But uh, the baby ones, if I did have a differentiating picture, those would probably go into like the annoying tier for me. But yeah, all these big guys, they're they are just insane. So, they're an A-tier enemy for me. Cool. I'm going to need a drink for this next one. Hold on. Death Claws. Is there any doubt in your mind that these guys are S-tier? Um, I think across every single game... This is the enemy that makes you shit your pants a little bit. And it's for good reason. They are fast as hell, take a ton of damage, and dish out a ton of damage. I mean, they will, in a few swipes, hit you and just mess you up. Seeing one of these guys is creepy enough. And, and when I did my playthrough of Fallout 3 again, um, I came across one of these really early at the Super Duper Mart. So my bitch ass just went into sneak mode went in a super duper mart and was like i'm not even gonna go near that thing then of course later on in the game you come to old alney and there's a whole nest of these fuckers uh you know it's probably the scariest area in the entire fallout 3 map um of course there is the death claw uh sanctuary which is like an underground cave system where there's a bunch of them but still, Old Alony hits differently because these fuckers come around corners really fast. I died many times there. Even though I brought a shit ton of bottle cap mimes, it, it, it's terrifying. So the only saving grace and the only reason these guys become bearable is when you eventually unlock the dart gun. And you can paralyze them and then just unload all your weapons into them. So these guys, forever S-tier, I'll even go ahead and say... 
Probably number one S tier across the board for me. <laughs> now let's change gears and talk about one of the more ridiculous enemies, and it's the Mole Rats. Ah, uh, Mole Rats. I don't even know. Ooh, this is tough. I think... Uh, I'm going to put them in F tier, because while they definitely take a lot more damage than the Rad Roaches... These guys are still just such a joke, and there is a um, a mole rat repellent stick that I think you get. I forget which mission you get it in. It might be the uh, the wasteland survival guide. I, I forget which one it is, but that thing is actually crazy effective at being able to repel and kill these things, and it somehow always ends up decapitating them, which is just a sidebar, kind of hilarious. All right, next we come up to the Feral Ghouls. And to anyone new to the Fallout franchise, these are basically your zombies of the wasteland. Uh, they're mindless humans who've been irradiated, and all they want to do is kill you and eat you. So um, I do have three variants here. So for the first variant, I'm going to call it just the Feral Ghouls, but it's also going to include the Swamp Ghouls as well as the Roamers. Um, these are basically... You know, they're all various strengths within each other, and I'm putting them right here at Cannon Fodder. Especially in the Metro Tunnels, you are going to run into so many of these guys that, yes, you're probably going to use your vats. You don't always need to, um, but they're just a constant threat and enemy you're going to deal with. So it's one of those ones that, yeah, they're never really scary, even in groups and even early on. If it's just the feral ones and even the occasional roamer, it's not going to be too bad. But next we have the glowing ones. And these guys, they stand out in the crowd. They glow bright green. And when you kill them, there's a mini explosion of radiation. These guys I'm going with, you're going to need a stem pack. It's my first B tier. And basically... It's very rare, unless you once again get a lot of criticals and sneak attacks, that you're going to walk away unscathed completely from these guys. So, they're a perfect B tier. I don't always think you need the strongest weapons to take them down. It would make life easier. But they're B tier at best because you're going to go through some health or you're going to eat some... Uh, drink... <clears throat> I can't speak right now. Or you're going to drink some Nuka Colas or eat some of your food. The next sons of bitches. Oh boy. The Feral Ghoul Reavers, who were added in the Broken Steel DLC. These guys. Ooh, these guys. These are S tier for sure. So I hope I, I'm showing you the correct footage because I think I recorded it. The first one I ran into in my replay of Fallout 3, I thought it was a roamer. And it's a single feral ghoul walking along i said oh this will be easy i took a few pop shots at it he came towards me with almost no damage done to him and fucked me up beyond belief i had to strategize so much i had to lay down mines hit him with missiles try to cripple his legs i even tried to recruit you know just by getting them engaged these random uh rebel outcast guys or these outcast Brotherhood of Steel. I forget their name. But he ended up killing them too. And I and it took like basically everything I had to put one of these guys down. It was absolutely insane. All right. Now we move on to some of the human characters you're going to interact with. And the first group is actually just... It's a generic kind of catch-all for any of the mercs you're going to run into. And I'm actually lumping in slavers, guards, kind of like any human you're really going to interact with on a regular basis throughout the game. And this enemy, I got to put in the C tier because, yes, you will take some damage sometimes. I found that by the time I hit level 12 to 15, I was taking them out pretty regularly, especially if you're using long range weapons or explosives. Um, and it was never something I worried about. And unless they got in a few good shots, I never really needed stim packs. So you know what? <clears throat> These guys, C tier is a perfect spot for them. They're the definition of cannon fodder. They're just a little bit more abundant than feral ghouls, I'll say. 
But now the next human group, I did feel the need to differentiate because the Talon Merc Company, who starts going after you, especially if you have good karma, these guys are very well equipped with energy weapons, with missiles, with just a crazy amount of just great arsenal. And they have great combat armor, so they take a lot of damage. You know what? These guys are easily... You know you're going to need some stim packs. Um, I don't think you really need to bust out your best when fighting them. But you, you can't just be hitting them with the 32 pistol or, you know, whatever weak melee you may be using. These guys are going to take a lot of your health. And especially at some of their outposts, they're a sweet pain in the ass. So B tier is fine for them. All right, the next one's a little bit of a joke, but it's also not a joke. Um, if you ever visit Vault 108 in Fallout 3, you will come across Gary. And you won't just come across one Gary. You're going to come across potentially 54 different Garys. Because in this vault, there was a cloning experiment. And this guy, Gary, cloned himself. I forget how many times. There's a ton of him. Um, and the only thing these sons of bitches can say is the word Gary. Now, they say it in different inflections, but still, like, there is something at first disturbing, but then just annoying <laughs> when you just hear Gary and it just happens over and over. They're not tough at all. Uh, majority of them, if not all of them, just use melee weapons. Um, so you're just going to be mowing them down one after another and going through that vault. It just it becomes very annoying. So. I felt the need to to add him as his own little category in this list because, yeah, that's a hell of a unique experience that you're going to deal with. So I felt the need to break him out. Next, let's talk about the big bad greenies, the Frankensteins of the Wasteland, the Super Mutants. So I did create four categories for these guys. The first one is just your standard Super Mutant or even... I could argue calling them the super mutant brutes. These are the guys, whether they're using the assault rifles or the blunt weapons, these are bullet sponges, um, but they're really not that tough. They just take a lot of damage. And um, I never found myself like, oh man, I'm going to die from just dealing with super mutants. Um, I think my first encounter with them in this game was the, uh, was it Big Trouble in Big Town when you're going to try and help them out and there's super mutants along the road and then you eventually go to the police headquarters where there's a lot of them and eventually you get to the vault and I forget which one is, is off the top of my head where you find out where they're cloning all of them from. These guys, I'm going to put in cannon fodder but they are stronger cannon fodder. I'm going to say that. The next ones are the super mutant masters they are significantly stronger, and I'm going to put these guys right in stem pack. Um, they usually have the Chinese assault rifles. Uh, I forget if these are the ones that sometimes carry mini guns or, or uh, missile launchers. But these guys, they just are a even more spongy version of super mutants with just a little better, better weaponry. Still, not the toughest in the world. But man, you know you're probably going to need to heal after a few encounters with these guys. <sighs> then we get on to another Broken Steel add-on, and that is the Super Mutant Overlords. These guys, minimum A tier. I consider them putting them in the S tier because they take so much damage. Uh, the only thing that stopped me is that they never dished out enough damage for me to really put them up a higher level. And then, and you know what? Honestly, most of the times when I ran into these guys, they were surrounded by other super mutants and I could still walk away fairly unscathed. Um, just, I know I've used the word spongy too much. These guys, the amount of, of uh, damage they take is ridiculous. And it was another case when I ran into them. I was like, oh, this super mutant looks a little weird. And I quickly realized some of the guns I was using on them just, just didn't seem to be doing anything. So, yeah, uh, going to leave them at A tier. Next is the super mutant behemoth. And 
these guys are the most impressive enemy because there's only five of them in Fallout 3. They're gigantic. And you know what? They are so fun to deal with because, especially in the first mission, which is, I, I think it's Galaxy News Radio when you're going to run across them. Um, not only do you experience in them, them for the first time, this is probably most people's first time using the Fat Man and you're shooting mini nukes at them. And while they are intimidating as shit, honestly, uh, I'm putting them at A tier simply because I know they do a massive amount of damage and take a lot of damage. I feel like this is the enemy that you know you're going to use either the dart gun to neutralize them, or this is where you saved all your nukes for the fat man, and you're going to try and take them down with that. Um... I get too excited to put them to S tier. Like, I almost look for the engagements with these guys. All right, the next one is the uh, Ant Queen that you're going to find if you do the side quest, those. And you discover her, like, hatchery where she's been spawning all of these other ants. Uh, you know, this is a weird one. She is, like, a unique boss enemy. And honestly, I found the path getting to her to be much tougher because she has these like specialty guardian ants. There's only a few of them, but they are, they're crazy tough. By the time I got to her, I felt like once I started engaging in battle with her, she was stuck to this one particular area. And while her acid spit and her damage was pretty high, she really couldn't leave the area. So it made it a little bit easier Honestly, I'm putting her in B tier because she took a ton of damage. I used a little bit of health, but I didn't feel like, oh man, this is impossible. I think I even messed around a little bit and started using weaker guns because I was like, well, she can't really go anywhere. I don't know if that was a glitch. If she was out in the open, maybe she'd be a lot tougher. But uh, yeah, she's only a B tier for me. All right. Now, keeping on with the insects, we have... Uh, the good old rad scorpions. Now, these baby ones, I'm just going to say right off the bat, they're annoying as shit. They're scary, but I also found that really no matter what I was doing, even if I couldn't kill them right away, I could back up fast enough before they could actually kill me. So if I ran into them, the thing that's annoying the most about these guys is that they are going to keep following you. So you know you just got to deal with them. Um... Yeah, the, the smaller ones, they're really not that bad. They're going to take a decent amount of ammo, but they're not terrible to deal with. The giant rad scorpions, on the other hand, um, I'm going to put them in, in, in need a stem pack. Because unless you have a follower or you do, once again, an incredible amount of range damage, the chances are these things are going to hit you. They put a lot of damage and... They take a lot. So my experiences with them is I would try to avoid them as best I could. The albino, uh, this is another broken steel add-on. It's just a tougher version of the giant rad scorpion. I'm just barely putting them in the A tier because they do put out more damage. They do take more damage. And I just wasn't fucking around when I saw these guys. I would use missiles. I would use something that was much stronger. I wasn't going to just use a submachine gun. So you know what? They deserve that, that tier just above because they were a little tougher. All right. Now we got the Mirelurks. And... Ooh. I'm, I'm torn on where I want to put these guys because... Ooh. This is tough. You know what? These are B-tier enemies. One, because if you want to take them out quickly, you got to shoot their face. And even if you have uh, really good perception and everything, uh, it's always a smaller percentage to hit them. And especially the Mirelurk Hunters, they are they just like do this like move where they kind of bend forward so their only their shell is exposed. Um, they take a lot of damage. They usually come in packs, especially in some of these vaults where there's just an outrageous number of them. You are going to burn through health. And I did find myself eating all the meat off of the dead ones I would can, I would kill just to not have to use all my stim packs. Um, they're not quite A tier. You can get away with using some of your weaker weapons. But still, these guys can be pretty damn intimidating. And like I said, especially for... 
you know, when they hit you with those groups. So, solid B tier. The next one is the Mirelar King, and this is basically the knockoff of Creature from the Black Lagoon. Uh, he has this weird kind of like sound echo wave thing that hits you from a distance. Best case I can give him is Cannon Fodder. And I only do that because he takes a lot of damage, but man, I'm never intimidated when I see these guys. I actually like kind of play around with them because I, I think they look so damn cool. I never took much damage. Even that annoying ass wave blast thing, it was just enough for me to go like, oh, okay, that's a little bit of an inconvenience, but I'm about to decapitate you with one of my stronger guns. So yeah, not strong enough to go to a B tier but definitely a little bit higher than an annoying tier. So now we're going to move on to some of the DLC enemies before we hit up the robots. Um, so if you never played the DLCs, uh, this is enemies you may have never encountered. But starting with the Abominations uh, from the Alien expansion pack, these guys, what I'll say from a look standpoint, they're creepy as hell. They're half human, half alien. And it's almost kind of like the, the creepy-ass alien from the end of Alien Resurrection. Um, but they also do this thing that I love. It's from Invasion of the Body Snatchers where they point at you like this and kind of do the scream. These guys are absolute tanks. Um, the scene when you unlock them is cool as shit. So I am going to say... Ooh. I'm going to put them in... You're going to need to bring out the big guns for these guys. So, uh, truth be told, by the time I got to this DLC, I had the dart gun, and I wasn't going to mess around. I would dart these sons of bitches and then just unload on them. And they would just take a lot of damage. They were pretty damn strong. But you're not going to mess around. Much like the goddamn regular aliens. Now... These sons of bitches are annoying as hell, but this is unfortunately an A-tier enemy. And my reasoning is, I cannot believe how much damage these sons of bitches take. And there's a couple variants, like the workers, I'm not counting them. I'm talking about the guys that are invisible, the guys that are in spacesuits. Um, I found myself just needing to use the best of the best to even keep tabs with them and i couldn't believe how much damage they would take when i would use my best stuff like it was never seemed to be enough these guys come in waves and they hit you with some ammo that is actually just pretty outrageous so right off the bat all i'm gonna say is they're annoying as hell but you gotta put you gotta hit them with stuff that's gonna dish out a lot of damage all right, next we have the Trogs, and you talk about an enemy that just looks absolutely terrifying. These things are so damn creepy looking. Similar to the Feral Ghouls, the way someone becomes a Trog is they're both uh, exposed to radiation, but in the Pit DLC, you'll learn somebody's been releasing something that's making everybody sick. If the sickness takes you over, you become these creatures. Right away, when I see them and the way they move, it makes me think of the creatures from the Descent. So that just adds up the creep factor. Now, what I will say is, individually, these things are no stronger than a Feral Ghoul. They're not bad. However, if you play through the pit and you have the different Brutes and Savage versions, these things can actually overwhelm you and swarm you pretty crazy. Um, just for the way they look... And the fact of this final mission, which I'll show you footage as I'm talking, if you can't sneak around them, they just, they're terrifying. So this is probably, you know, it, it definitely deviates from why I put some of my other S tier enemies here, but they just combine the look, the overwhelming attack, and they are just creepy to the point where I would say, you know what? Yes, I probably could deal with them. I want to avoid them because they're creepy as hell and it's just a goddamn massacre when it gets to that final mission. So it's not fair, but I'm putting them in the S tier. All right. And then from the point lookout, you have what I call all these swamp folk. Uh, it's your scrappers, your brawlers, your creepers. It's all the different kind of 
categories of these guys. And what you really end up with is, you know, some of them have guns. This, like the one I have the picture of, they just have, uh, they're much stronger. They use melee weapons. Um, these guys are all cannon fodder. There's nothing really special about them. They take a little bit more damage than your regular raider. But honestly, they're nothing special. And you know what? They're kind of just annoying to deal with. But I couldn't put them in the annoying category because you really only deal with them in the DLC. And even in that DLC, it's not like you're dealing with them every 10 minutes. And now we're going to move on to the Operation Anchorage DLC. And we're going to start with the Chinese soldiers. These guys, they're going right in cannon fodder. They're just better trained mercs and raiders and everything you're going to deal with. So there's nothing that special. Yes, some of them have pretty heavy artillery. Still, they're nothing bad to deal with. The one variant of these guys that I would say are a little bit more interesting are the Crim Crimson Dragoons because these guys make themselves invisible. Now, if you have vats and you're just going through and clicking, you'll see them and you can probably still deal with them. But between the ones that uh, can hit you with the sword or the sniper versions, these guys are pretty dangerous. And if they get a few hits in, you're going to go through some health pretty quickly. Plus, they're in a pretty cool little, like, G.I. Joe ninja outfit. So I had to put them just a tier above the regular soldiers. And then the final human enemy that I'm going to put in here is the Enclave. Uh, the majority of the Enclave enemies you're going to deal with are in some form of power armor so you got like the hellfire ones that use the incinerators you have the standard ones and like the tesla gear which use energy weapons these are just humans that are really well trained really well equipped and they're in the strongest armor in the game so yeah you're gonna have to use your big boy stuff against these guys you can't just be shooting them with your silence 10 millimeter even if you want to they gotta go there so an annoying human enemy, strongest human enemy you're going to deal with. Now let's move on to the final category. These are these are honestly the enemies I dislike the most. But we have the robots. And first, let's start with the spider drone. Uh, these things, I'm going right to F tier. They are in the Operation Anchorage DLC. And they just kind of skitter around one or two pop shots. You can take them out. Half the time when I was with my squad, I never even got a fire off before they destroyed all of them. So it's almost like I didn't know they were there. The next are the drones from the uh, the Alien DLC. And these guys are annoying as hell because they're fairly easy to deal with. But some of them have these drone cannons, which actually can do a lot of damage to you. Nine times out of ten, though, you can take these guys out really quickly or you get a little device that you can turn around and control them so they're just annoying take a lot of damage then we got the enclave ibots and these are another ones um unless you're actively engaging with constant battle with the enclave you're going to come across these they won't even touch you now once you start fighting them they go down remarkably easy and i'm pretty sure in future games they become tougher but in this one they're F tier. You don't really got to waste a lot of effort on these. All right, now we're going on to the Mr. Gutsies and all their variants. These guys, uh, you're definitely going to go through a stim pack or two. Uh, they are strong. Now, if you target specific areas, you make their weapons, you know, non-usable because you messed them up so much. They're a little bit easier to deal with. I never found myself like very worried or thinking I needed to use my best stuff. You just know you're going to take some damage. These fucking turrets. Let me tell you, they are annoying as shit. And yes, they take damage. And yes, sometimes they could they can do some serious damage to you. Every time I saw a turret, I was just like, God damn it. Just stop with the turrets. So they are going in annoying all day long. The Protectrons. Uh, these guys... Hmm... I'm going to put them in cannon fodder. They take an okay amount of damage. And they're n I didn't see them enough for them to be annoying to me. And there was something kind of like satisfying about the sound when you when you do destroy them. So in some of the like like the Robco factories, yeah, you're going to come in 
across a ton of them. Um, they're not a big deal. You can take them down pretty easily. So, solid C tier enemy. These Robo Brains. Uh, I thought these were going to be cannon fodder. The only reason I'm putting them in B tier is if they do hit you, they almost always have, they always um, cripple your head, which didn't happen to me until much later in the game. And I was actually shocked. I was like, what the hell? I was able to take these guys out so quickly. But man, I got hit a few times and I was like, okay, anything that in one hit is going to cripple you. You got to put them in at least B tier. These guys are annoying. And then the final, the good old sentry bot. Now, what I will say is this is an A tier enemy because don't fuck around. If they see you from a distance, they're going to hit you with a missile launcher. Or they're going to hit you with a Gatling gun. Or they're going to hit you with a flamethrower. And they take a lot of damage. Now, I will still say these guys are nothing compared to future versions of sentry guns or, or sentry bots still in this game they are a strong ass enemy that when you see them you're gonna go now i gotta waste some missiles or something strong so yeah that pretty much concludes it i hope you guys enjoy doing this tier list i will have the results posted on twitter along with this video and as i said if you're watching this make sure you click the link below I want to see you guys do your own tier list. Share it with us. Tell me where you think I'm completely off. Obviously, I have a lot of biases with all this. This game is still very fresh in my mind, so these are just my raw honest opinions. I hope you enjoy this type of video because I have a lot of ideas for different rankings I want to do, and I like you guys hearing my thought process as I put these things together. So with that, I want to say have a good night, everyone. Cheers.